In the heart of the rugged mountains, a group of friends embarked on a hiking trip to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. Leading the pack was John, an adventurous soul with a thirst for exploration. Their destination was a remote cabin nestled deep within the wilderness, promising solitude and respite from the chaos of the modern world. As they arrived at the cabin, a sense of unease washed over them. The structure stood in isolation, surrounded by towering trees that seemed to whisper ancient secrets in the wind. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that danced ominously around the cabin, setting the stage for what was to come. Night descended like a heavy cloak, enveloping the group in darkness. John's unease grew with each passing moment, a nagging feeling that they were not alone in the wilderness. The crackling fire in the hearth provided little comfort as he scanned the tree lean, half expecting to see eyes glinting in the shadows. Suddenly, a loud banging noise shattered the stillness of the night, echoing through the cabin like a thunderclap. John's heart raced as he rushed to the window, his breath catching in his throat. There, bathed in moonlight, stood a figure cloaked in darkness, its gaze fixed on the cabin with an intensity that sent shivers down his spine. Guys, come quick. John called out to his friends, his voice tinged with urgency. But when they arrived at the window, the figure had vanished into the night, leaving only the rustling leaves as evidence of its presence. A sense of foreboding settled over the group as they exchanged uneasy glances, the wilderness around them alive with unseen eyes. Deciding to put the eerie encounter behind them, the group retreated to their respective rooms to rest for the night. However, sleep proved elusive for John as he lay in bed, his senses on high alert. Strange noises drifted through the cabin, whispers of the unknown that seemed to seep through the walls and into his very soul. In the darkness, John's imagination ran wild, conjuring shadows that danced at the edge of his vision. He could almost feel a presence in the room with him, a cold breath on the back of his neck that made his skin prickle with fear. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind, sent a jolt of apprehension through his veins. Morning brought little relief as the group gathered outside the cabin, their faces drawn with unease. Scratch marks more at the weather with the cabin, a silent testament to the events of the night. Footprints led from the woods to the doorstep, disappearing into the undergrowth as if swallowed by the wilderness itself. With a silent agreement, the friends packed their belongings hastily, eager to leave the cabin and its haunting memories behind. As they trekked back through the dense woods, a sense of relief washed over them, the distant echoes of strange noises fading with each step. The cabin stood silent and still as the group disappeared into the mist-shrouded mountains, its secrets hidden within the depths of the forest. John cast one final glance over his shoulder, a lingering feeling of dread tucking at his heart. They never spoke of their night in the cabin again, leaving the shadows of the unknown to linger in the wilderness, a chilling reminder of the mysteries that lurked in the heart of the mountains. I was leaving from Pax Hungary to Zurich, catching a flight there back to Boston via JFK and NYC. To get to Zurich I needed to take a 5-hour bus ride to Budapest, take the subway a few stops until I reached the main rail station. I was tired, hungry, thirsty and really had to shit by the time I got to Budapest. I decided to carry on and hold it until I got to the main railway station. I don't end up shitting my pants, sorry to let you down. I make it there just in the nick of time. Something about holding it in for that long really exhausted me, and I just wanted to get on the train and sleep. After waiting two hours my train arrived and I found my cabin. There were two portly Hungarian girls already in there watching movies on their laptop, and they seemed very friendly and easygoing. I mingled a little to be friendly, but really just wanted to sleep. Then arrived disaster. 
These two Roma girls literally fell into our cabin laughing their heads off and blasting dance music on their Nokias. They were blasting two different songs on two different Nokias. Now I ride the subway every day in Boston, so I'm used to pricks who don't know how to use headphones, so I didn't think too much of it. They didn't speak a lick of English, but I guess really took a liking to me since every time I closed my eyes I would get poked in the side of the head and giggled it like I was an animal. They really wanted to talk to me through the other Hungarian girls, asking if I had a girlfriend, or I was from, occasionally breaking out a few lines of broken English themselves like handsome boy, while petting my head. I believe in personal space, but I also know trying to argue with them would probably be futile. After a while I fell into one of my books realizing I would soon get no sleep. I don't know at what point this happened, but somebody broke out a porno and put it on the Hungarian girl's laptop. I would get poked, shown the porno and laughed at. Now I'm no slouch, when it comes time to get nasty, I get nasty, but this was just not the time for this. I was not attracted to these girls, they smelled like a hockey player's foot and I was going on 24 hours with no sleep. Plus I had just left my girlfriend in Pex, and I was slash still am in love. I wasn't going to screw around. Finally, one of them puts her hand on my junk, bites my ear and asks me you want sex me? To which I replied Nim, taking her hand out of my lap. I then got a barrage of seg fetch from the two Roma. Look it up. I spent the next six hours with these girls blasting music, poking me, berating me and holding in a piss for fear of them riffling through my shit. I guess I'm kind of a pushover in these situations. I didn't want to overreact or lose my shit, I just wanted the train ride to end without getting stabbed or raped by two girls. I guess karma shifted my way in the long run, when we hit the Switzerland border the girls were detained by border patrol, probably for being Roma. That sucks and everything, I know that the Roma people have a bad rap in Europe, but I hated these girls at this point, I hated them so hard. I got a good one hour of drifting in and out of naps, but I still felt like shit when we pulled into the Zurich train station. More good news when I arrived to Zurich airport, I found out they overbooked the flight, and I had been bumped up to first class. I went from sharing a cramped quarter with two Roma snookies, to having a chair that turned into a bed, unlimited wine, and a four-course meal. Venturing to Pamplona for the famed running of the balls, I embraced the spontaneity of backpacking, allowing my whims to guide my journey. For going accommodation reservations, I found myself amidst the lively chaos of the week-long festival, only to discover that every lodging option had been claimed months prior. With no room to rest my head, I opted to store my belongings at the train station and seek refuge in the city's parks like many other travelers. Night after night, the parks were drenched by sprinklers, denying me the chance to find solace and sleep. Exhausted and weary, I ventured to a park on the outskirts of town, hoping for a few hours of respite. As dawn approached, I made my way back towards the town center, the empty streets cloaked in a veil of silence and solitude. Suddenly, a group of young individuals materialized out of the shadows, their presence sending a shiver down my spine. Before I could react, they encircled me, a glint of malice in their eyes as one brandished a knife, demanding my possessions. Though their words were foreign, their intentions were crystal clear. Panic seized me, and in a moment of desperation, I cried out for help in my native tongue, attempting to flee. In a swift motion, the assailants tore my fanny pack from me, the sharp blade slicing through the strap. With their ill-gotten gains in hand, they vanished into the darkness, leaving me shaken but thankfully unarmed. While they absconded with my camera and train ticket, my vital documents and valuables remained concealed within a hidden money belt, a small comfort amidst the chaos. 
The ordeal served as a harsh lesson learned in the unforgiving streets of Pamplona, the importance of securing accommodations in advance, avoiding makeshift lodgings in public spaces, and exercising caution when navigating unfamiliar terrain, especially during the solitary hours of the night. The theft of my belongings underscored the necessity of safeguarding valuables beneath layers of clothing, a precautionary measure that proved invaluable in the face of adversity. As I reflected on the harrowing encounter, I resolved to approach future travels with heightened vigilance and prudence, recognizing the inherent risks that accompany the thrill of exploration. The shadows of Pamplona cast a somber reminder of the vulnerabilities that lurk beneath the surface of unfamiliar lands, urging me to tread with caution and resilience in the pursuit of adventure. It was a warm summer day over the weekend and my brother, my sister, and I decided to go to the park with our two best friends. The park was close to where we lived and it was in an isolated area surrounded by woods. Parents would sit on the picnic tables not too far from the playground while they watched their kids play. We met our friends there and we played on the playground and then we played tag with some of the other kids. While everyone else was on the playground my friend and I wanted to go explore in the woods. We didn't ask our parents first because we thought it would be okay. We started hiking and we discovered a stream. My friend and I love science and rocks and minerals so we started searching for cool rocks. We continued exploring until we thought we heard something or someone walking in the woods because the leaves were crunching. We thought it was an animal so we looked around but didn't see anything or anyone so we continued exploring. As we made it farther into the woods I got an uncomfortable feeling that someone was watching us so I asked if we could go back to the playground. My friend said sure because our parents would worry if they didn't see us. We hiked back and continued playing on the playground. As we were swinging on the swings we saw a little boy wander off in the woods to explore. We noticed a car parked on the other side of the woods and a guy came out from behind a tree and closer to the little boy. It looked like the guy was trying to lure the boy to come with him. The boy started to go with him and the guy tried to grab him but just then his parents noticed and called for him to come back. The guy that wanted to kidnap him took off running into the woods and drove away quickly. One of the parents got a picture of the kidnapper though. My friend and I were freaked out because we were in that same spot as the guy. He could have been hiding behind a tree watching us the whole time or took off with one of us running. Thank goodness we are both okay and one of the parents noticed and saved the boy from getting kidnapped. After that my family and friends all went home. We decided never to go back to that park ever again. The police were called and I'm not sure if they ever found that person. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the desolate highway as four friends embarked on a road trip that would turn into a nightmare. Mark, Alex, Emily, and Sarah had been planning this trip for months, eager to explore the open road and create memories that would last a lifetime. Little did they know, the darkness lurking ahead would test their friendships and their very will to survive. The air was thick with excitement as Mark revved the engine of his sleek black sedan, the sound echoing through the empty streets of their small town. Alex sat shotgun, his eyes gleaming with anticipation, while Emily and Sarah chattered excitedly in the back seat. With a final glance at their map and a chorus of laughter, they set off into the unknown. As the miles rolled by, the landscape shifted from bustling city streets to sprawling countryside, dotted with quaint farmhouses and rolling hills. The conversation flowed freely as they reminisced about old memories and shared dreams for the future. But beneath the surface, a sense of unease lingered, as if some unseen force was watching their every move. Nightfall descended like a shroud, 
enveloping the car in darkness as they pressed onward, their headlights cutting through the inky blackness. Suddenly, a figure appeared in the distance, standing motionless on the side of the road. Mark slowed the car to a halt, exchanging wary glances with his friends as they approached the mysterious stranger. As they drew closer, they could see that the figure was a woman, her face obscured by the hood of her tattered cloak. With a trembling hand, Emily rolled down her window, her voice barely above a whisper as she called out to the woman. But there was no response, only the sound of the wind rustling through the trees. Just as they were about to drive away, the woman turned towards them, her eyes gleaming with an otherworldly intensity. With a blood-curdling scream, she lunged towards the car, her hands clawing at the windows in a desperate frenzy. Terrified, Mark slammed his foot on the gas pedal, the tires screeching as they peeled away into the night. Shaken but determined to put the encounter behind them, the friends pressed onward into the night, the glow of the moon casting eerie shadows across the empty road. But as the hours passed and exhaustion began to set in, their nerves frayed and their senses heightened, every shadow morphing into a potential threat. It was then that they heard it, a faint tapping on the roof of the car, like the sound of nails on glass. Heart pounding, Sarah peered out the window, her breath catching in her throat as she spotted a shadowy figure crouched on the roof, its eyes glowing in the darkness. With a cry of alarm, she alerted the others, their panic rising as they realized they were being hunted. With adrenaline coursing through their veins, the friends rallied together, their minds racing as they searched for a way to escape their unseen assailant. But no matter how fast they drove or how far they fled, the figure remained hot on their trail, its presence a constant reminder of the danger lurking just beyond the headlights. As dawn broke on the horizon, illuminating the twisted wreckage of their once promising adventure, the friends found themselves cornered, their backs against the wall as they faced their ultimate test. With no other option but to fight for their lives, they banded together, their screams echoing through the empty wilderness as they waged war against the darkness. In the end, only time would tell whether they would emerge victorious or succumb to the horrors that awaited them on the road to terror. Months have passed since that fateful night, but the memories of their harrowing ordeal still haunt the friends, their lives forever changed by the darkness they encountered on the open road. Though they have tried to move on, the scars of their trauma run deep, a constant reminder of the fragility of life and the tenuous grip we hold on reality. As they gaze out at the world through weary eyes, they can't help but wonder what other horrors lurk just beyond the edge of their perception, waiting to pounce when least expected. But one thing is certain, they will never forget the night they dared to venture into the unknown, only to come face to face with the true meaning of fear.